friends. Welcome to library. Thank you for coming to read with me. Today I have a book from one of my favorite genres. Um, it is historical fiction. And what that means is fiction is a made up story. It's not a true one. And historical means it is it, something that happens in the past. And so this is a made up story of something that truly did happen in the past. And um, we are going to learn about a girl who can knit scarves. And we're going to learn why she is knitting scarves. Pay special close attention to what happens. A Scarf for Kiko by Anne Malaspina, illustrated by Mara Lee Rudio. Here we go. A Scarf for Kiko. The needle slipped from Sam's hand. The needle slipped from Sam's hands and the wool tangled up in knots. Knitting made him want to pull his hair out. Next to him, Kiko bent over her wool. Her needles flew like the wind. Click clack, click clack. Rows of blue stitches grew inch by inch. Good work, Kiko, said their teacher, Mrs. Olson. Having a problem, Sam? Click clack. Remember, pick up the yarn, wrap it around the needle, pull the stitch through, she said. We must do our part for the war effort. Our soldiers are counting on you, Sam. That's a mistake, Sam thought. I am a terrible knitter. No one should count on me. In the lunchroom, Sam felt a tap on his shoulder. Kiko smiled at him. I can help you with your knitting. Kiko was Sam's next door neighbor. Ever since President Roosevelt had declared war on Japan in December, some of Sam's friends refused to talk to Kiko and the other Japanese American students at First Street School in Boyle Heights. I don't need any help, mumbled Sam, turning away. Kiko's smile disappeared. Suit yourself. She turned her back and sat at an empty table. After lunch, Sam played catch with his best friend Jack. Have you heard from Mike? Jack asked as he caught the ball smoothly. Sam shook his head, and then he thought about his older brother fighting in the war. Sam's stomach tied up in knots like the yarn on his desk. Don't worry, Jack said. He's probably too busy winning the war to write a letter. After school, Sam saw Coco, Kiko pedaling past him down East First Street on her fire engine red bicycle. A car slowed down. A teenage boy leaned out the window. Splat. An egg landed on the sidewalk. Go back to Japan, the boy yelled. Her bike skidded, but Kiko didn't fall. She pedaled even faster around the corner as Sam watched. You see that? How sad. She looks scared and sad. That night, Sam listened to the radio with his parents. President Roosevelt was announcing the latest war news. Do you think we're going to win? Sam asked. If we all do our part, Dad said. I hear that you're knitting for the soldiers. Good work. Knitting again, Sam sighed. On the way to school, Kiko's brakes screeched at the crosswalk. Hello, Sam. Knitting needles stuck out of her bag. Standing next to Jack, Sam pretended not to hear. How's Mike? The light changed, and they pushed across the street. I hope he's okay, Kiko shouted, flying down the street. Jack elbowed him. You shouldn't talk to Kiko Seiko. What would Mike think? Sam's brother had helped Kiko fix her bike once. He had shown her how to patch a flat tire and grease the chain. Mike wouldn't mind Sam talking to Kiko, but that was too hard to explain to Jack. I didn't talk to her, Jack said. She talked to me. On Friday, Mom asked Sam to go to her favorite flower shop in Little Tokyo to pick up flowers for the Shabbat table. 
the trolley stopped in front of Mr. Sato's grocery store. Mr. Sato was sweeping up broken glass. Sam got off the trolley with his head down. Mr. Sato didn't see him. And over Mr. Sato's business, it says, I am an American. And I'm sure it's because they're at war with Japan. We are at war with Japan during this time. And I'm sure a lot of people uh, destroyed Mr. Sato's business because they thought he was Japanese and was against the Americans, which he is not, he's an American. And the flower shop was closed and it says, go back to Japan. So there's a lot of hate going on during the war. Just before sunset, mom lit the Shabbat candles and said the blessing. After they sat down, dad said the blessing over the wine and the shala. As they began to eat, dad cleared his throat. President Roosevelt is worried that people with Japanese ancestors are spies, he said. He's sending them away. Mom shook her head. The war is terrible. My sisters in Poland are in great danger. Mike is risking his life to fight, and now little Tokyo looks like a ghost town. Sam put down his fork. But Kiko isn't a spy. Of course she isn't, Dad said, and Mom nodded. I'm going to invite the Sados for dinner tomorrow. They are good Americans and the best neighbors. Kiko wasn't at school on Monday. The knitting was a disaster. Sam almost poked himself in the eye. He threw down his needles. I can't do it. Mrs. Olson said he could write a letter to Mike instead. Dear Mike, I'm sorry that I won't be able to knit you a pair of socks. I'm a terrible knitter. Kiko's the best knitter in our class, but she may have to go away soon. Please come home safely. Your brother, Sam. After school, Kiko was sitting on her front steps. Hello, Kiko, Sam called out. She didn't look up. The only sound was her needles. Click, clack, click, clack. The Sados can't come to dinner, Mom told Sam. They have to pack. They just learned that they're being sent north to an intern camp, internment camp in the, in the desert. She gestured at the unfamiliar tea set on the kitchen table. They can only bring what they can carry. So I offered her to take care of Mrs. Sado's precious tea set. I told her it will be here when they get home. How long will they be away? Sam asked. Mom sighed. No one knows. And then they were gone. The morning after the Sados left, Sam saw it. Kiko's bicycle in front of his house. On the handlebars was a pair of blue wool socks with a note. Dear Sam, here are the socks I needed for Mike. Tell him to come home safely. Your friend and neighbor Kiko. P.S. You can borrow my bike until I get back. Sam shivered. The desert where Kiko was going would be cold at night. In his mother's yarn bag, Sam found a ball of red wool. Socks were too hard to make, but Sam could knit something else for Kiko. He remembered Mrs. Olson's advice. Pick up the yarn, wrap it around the needles, pull the stitch through. Click, clack, click, clack. Come home safely, Mike and Kiko. Click clack, click clack. Come home safely. Sam's needles flew faster and faster and rows of red stitches grew inch by inch. Dear Kiko, I wanted to make this scarf for you to wear while you're away. Your friend, Sam. So, this story takes place in Los Angeles neighborhoods in Boyle Heights and nearby Little Tokyo where Jews and Japanese Americans lived side by side and attended school together in the early decades of the 20th century. When Japan Japanese planes bombed the US Naval base at Pearl Harbor on December 6, 1941, President Franklin D. Roosevelt declared war on Japan. Even though they had done nothing wrong, suspicion fell on Japanese Americans and their patriotism and loyalty were questioned. A few months later, the president signed Executive Order 9066, authorizing the removal 
of Japanese Americans to internment camps. The order was aimed at all people of Japanese descent living near the Pacific Ocean, including American citizens born in the United States, like Kiko in this story. When copies of this order appeared on telephone poles and storefronts, many Japanese Americans had to close their businesses and pack up all their possessions. Men, women, and children lined up to board buses, trucks, cars, and trains for the trips to the camps. Wearing a tag stamped with a number that identified their family, they could bring only what they could carry. Wow. So, Kiko is made up, Sam is made up, but the things that happen in this story are true. And we just have to remember to be kind to everyone and to try our best. Thank you for reading with me.